Is Sono Pan good for soundproofing? That's the question I'm going to try and answer for you guys today. This is a product that has been making its way around the internet and on YouTube. Um, they've got some great public relations, great marketing. So I wanted to uh, take a deep dive in and see, is this worth all the hype? Or is it just another one of those products that honestly is kind of like snake oil and probably is a waste of money? So stick around if you're interested to find out what I have to say. And before I jump in, if you are on a soundproofing journey, uh, I highly recommend checking out my free soundproofing workshop. This will go in depth teaching you the proper ways to soundproof your home recording studio and get the best results you possibly can. So to check that out, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. Let's jump into this lesson on is Sonopan good? for soundproofing. So first off, what is Sonopan? So according to their website, it is 100% recycled wood with wood binders. Now I'm assuming wood binders means wood glue or some sort of adhesive that holds the recycled wood together. They are a Canadian company and the company that makes Sonopan is called MSL. They claim to be a manufacturing company. So pretty vague there, but you know, hey, it's cool. It's kind of like green glue. You know, there's these bigger corporations that own the product that they're trying to sell for soundproofing. So how is Sonopan used? Again, according to their website, they say to apply the Sonopan directly to the wood studs and then layer one to two layers of five eighths inch drywall on top of it. They also say if you're wanting to just soundproof your room without going down to the studs, you can put the sono pan directly over the existing drywall. However, it seems like it's not quote unquote structural. So they want you to put another layer of drywall on top of the sono pan. So it's sandwiched in there is I think what they're trying to get at. They also have a product called sono pan X, which they say is used for floor soundproofing. Uh, they do say that it's best used for footfall noise and not so much airborne sound transmission. So now that we know what it's made of and how it's used in application, let's ask ourselves, is Sonopan good for soundproofing? Now this is kind of a loaded question, but I'm gonna break it down for you and explain to you what I think. So first off, they have something that they trademarked called noise stop technology. Now the word technology gets used a lot in the soundproofing world and the acoustics world, and it's kind of driving me a little crazy because it means absolutely nothing. Uh, noise stop technology is TM trademarked, and therefore it is a genius marketing move. Uh, but other than that, it means absolutely nothing. There's no proof that they have this special technology that stops noise. That's crazy. All right, I'm gonna read this directly from their website to help you understand what this noise stop technology really is. It says that Sonopan has over 17,000 impressions in both sides of the panel, resulting in a varying density throughout. When it comes to soundproofing, each frequency range has a corresponding sound wave where the peaks and valleys of that range are a certain size. The peaks and valleys in Sonopan are what make it extremely effective at soundproofing. That is directly from the soundproofing website, quoted. I read it exactly as they say. And as soon as I read that, I was like, oh no. <laughs> None of this makes physical sense. And I'll explain that to you in a second here. First off, as many of you may already know, acoustic panels, for example, absorbing acoustic panels is not the same as soundproofing. So if what they're saying is correct, technically fiberglass, which often we say Corning 703 fiberglass to be specific, has a really high absorption coefficient across the frequency spectrum. What that means is exactly what they're saying Sonopan does. It's, it's got the ability to absorb frequencies across the frequency spectrum and when you have an absorption coefficient of one, it means it absorbs 100% of that frequency. When you have something below one, it means it absorbs a percentage of that frequency, not 100% of it. So with Sonopan, they don't have any information that I could find on their website about absorption coefficients, which would be really helpful for proving their point that it absorbs 
a lot of sound waves at different frequencies. However, they're not even saying that it's good at absorbing sound. They're saying that it's really good at soundproofing, which is also false. Because what you need for soundproofing is mass, first of all. Second, you need it to be an airtight assembly, meaning there's no way air can pass through your wall, your window, your door, your floor, your ceiling. And lastly, you need to make sure that that wall, floor, ceiling, door, whatever, is decoupled from the outside structure. Sonopan on its, on its own doesn't do any of those things. It only supposedly works for soundproofing when you apply it to what I just talked about, which I'll talk about more in a second here. But this is really misleading, and I'm kind of appalled, honestly. Lastly, they say that Sonopan can absorb lower frequencies. This is also just physically impossible. So let's just do a very quick physics lessons on how sound works. There are different frequencies. The higher frequencies have smaller wavelengths. The lower frequencies have much, much larger wavelengths. For example, a 5,000 Hertz wavelength is only 0.23 feet long when sound is traveling at 1,125 feet per second, which is also based on temperature, humidity, things like that. But we're using that just as an example. For a 60 hertz wavelength, for example, which is a low frequency, commonly heard in bass, low trucks, driving by your studio, maybe the low rumble of a lawnmower, uh, we could say like the low sound of a plane flying overhead, those low frequencies are what are the hardest to soundproof or keep out of your room. What's interesting here is that Sonopan apparently absorbs low frequencies, which is impossible because even if all those little tiny nooks and crannies in the wood fibers did in fact absorb those smaller frequencies that hit the panel, much like fiberglass does, low frequencies can only truly be absorbed or stopped by using pressure traps, which are commonly referred to as Hemholtz resonators, membrane traps, diaphragmatic traps. There's all sorts of ways that you can create a pressure situation that will absorb lower frequencies. But there is no way without creating absorption from fiberglass with a quarter wavelength of the wave of actually absorbing that sound. So all this said, it is physically impossible again, unless I could see their results from a lab test, for Sonopan to absorb frequencies below 125 hertz. That said, drop that mic there. Let's keep talking about Sonopan here. Let's look at their STC ratings. So first, let's do a quick review of what STC is. STC, for those of you who may not be super familiar with it, is called sound transmission class. It is commonly used in the soundproofing world to compare different soundproofing assemblies, assemblies meaning walls, doors, windows, floors, ceilings, you know, the things that keep sound out, and being able to compare them like apples to apples. In reality, it's kind of an outdated and not so great use of a rating scale, and it is commonly overused in marketing systems for companies selling soundproofing materials to prove that their product is superior to other products on the market. Again, it's all capitalism, baby. But what we are really gonna look at here are the limits to STC ratings. So first off, it's super, super important for you to recognize that the STC ratings of anything out there on the internet has a limit of going down to 125 hertz and it goes up to 4,000 hertz. The reason for that is STC ratings were created to help reduce the sound of human voice in like apartment complexes and normal uh, envir building environments. They were never meant to help us build soundproof home recording studios. However, as the home recording studio market took off, STC ratings became the number one tool for marketers to prove that they have these high STC ratings. The problem is, like I said before, the biggest thing, the hardest thing to keep out of your soundproof studio or keep in to your soundproof studio are low bass frequencies. For example, if you're a drummer and you're playing your drums and you have a kick drum, almost all those frequencies are sitting in that 100 hertz or lower range. Same with a bass guitar, if you have a bass amp. Same if you're rehearsing with your band. All that low frequency energy is not even accounted for when it comes to STC ratings. So what does this mean? It means when you look at STC ratings, you can't really trust them in the low frequency range. It's just not actually tested. 
Okay, all this said, let's take a look at the STC ratings that Sonopan advertises on their website. So the first one I'm gonna look at is this diagram here, which shows a typical wall assembly that I would recommend for any soundproof home recording studio. This is what I call the double wall assembly. It essentially is two layers of 5 8 inch drywall, your outside exterior wall, a one inch air gap with R13 fiberglass insulation in the middle, then another interior wall, wood stud, with two layers of 5 8 inch drywall. Now in this example, they replaced one of the 5 8 inch drywall layers on the inside wall with Sonopan, and they claim to get an STC rating of 68. Now in the STC world, that's actually pretty good. So interesting, but remember, this doesn't account for bass frequencies. So what's going on here? Do we really know how well this is gonna soundproof compared to two layers of 5 8 inch drywall? Another thing that's interesting, which I'll talk about later, is that Sonopan weighs only 26 pounds, where 5 8 inch drywall weighs 70.4 pounds. Now, we also know that in soundproofing, mass is the number one most important way to block out noise, and it's especially the number one way to block out low frequencies below 125 hertz, which is not accounted for in STC ratings. Interesting. So we don't really know how well this is going to soundproof that low subwoofer in your home theater or in your studio, do we? Okay, let's continue on. So now let's look at the same assembly, and this diagram is from the Home Recording Studio book, Build It Like the Pros by Rod Gervais. It's also in the Master Handbook of Acoustics, which is one of the most well-respected published books and peer-reviewed books on sound and acoustics. And this shows you that the same design without Sonopan will give you an STC rating of 63. And again, remember, it has more mass. So 63, 68, not a huge difference there in the STC ratings. And would you notice that? Not really. All right, now let's look at one other thing just to compare our apples to apples of STC ratings. This is a diagram from the soundproofing company. And th this is showing the same exact design, but using green glue in the middle of the 5 8 inch drywall on both sides instead of Sonopan and instead of not having anything at all. So now we get an STC rating of 72, which is like, oh, that's really impressive. But again, we're just talking about numbers here. STC 72, STC 68, STC 63. And then again, on top of all this, I asked Sonopan if they could send me their lab verified test reports and they responded to me over email saying, we currently do not sell Sonopan in the United States. Thank you for your interest. Uh, that did not answer my question at all. So clearly something funky is going on. If a company is not willing to actively show their verified lab test results showing how they got that STC rating, it means we can't really compare apples to apples. We have no idea how they got that STC rating. And this is just common practice in the industry to go to a verified lab like Riverbank Laboratory or something like that here in the United States. Super common. You'll see it all the time, whether it's acoustic panels, soundproofing products, you name it. Having that verified lab report is the scientific proof saying, hey, we actually value our product and have tested it by someone who doesn't care if it's good or bad. Let me get off my high horse here for a second. All this is to say... Be really wary of all these STC ratings and visual cool graphics you see on the internet. It's a lot of voodoo. So here's the key takeaway that I'm coming up with after doing some quick research on the Sonopan website. Soundproofing is honestly not that sexy. You can put green glue, you can put Sonopan, you can put mass loaded vinyl, you can use all these fancy soundproofing products, but at the end of the day, it's just, two layers of 5 8 inch drywall, two walls, a one inch air gap, some R13 insulation, and using acoustic caulk to seal around and make sure it's airtight. It's just not that complicated. And you guys know it, we all know it, but there's all these people that are trying to sell you something saying, oh no, no, it needs to be more complicated that, than that. You really need to overthink this. And I'm just here to say, you, you really don't. <laughs> okay. Now let's go on to the fifth point I have here, which is how much does Sonopan cost? So I did a quick uh, look on good old Home Depot. I think it's only in Canada. And uh, Sonopan costs currently $29.63 per four by eight foot panel. Now compare that to 5 8 inch drywall 
and currently at Home Depot as well. 5 8 inch drywall is $17.87. So a little over, but roughly half the cost of Sonopan. So just right there, by not using Sonopan, you could have your budget uh, for your drywall expenses. And remember again that it also helps you with mass, which is the number one thing that stops low frequencies. So are you still gonna buy Sonopan? Okay, let's keep going. So in conclusion, <laughs> I think you all know where I'm going. I had a lot of fun kind of picking apart the marketing and the genius marketing. I'll give them that. It's really good PR uh, on this soundproofing product. But it's really fun to know your physics, know the fundamentals, have built a studio myself, and know when you're kind of being duped. And I would say that consumers out there who are buying Sonopan, uh, I've even had people who have signed up for my free soundproof clarity calls. And this one guy, poor guy, he he put Sonopan all over his home recording studio and was like, it's so amazing. Like no one can hear each other talk because the Sonopan's so good at absorbing sound. And, and again, you could line your entire studio with fiberglass and it would do the same exact thing. And then you're going to put five eighths inch drywall on top of the Sonopan and you're going to be like, oh, it's so echoey and the soundproofing is not working anymore. It's like, dude, that's not soundproofing. That's room acoustics and absorption. So there's just so much misinformation out there and I just, it pains me to see it. And that's why I created this whole YouTube channel was to help people navigate the craziness, navigate all the kind of snake oils, voodoo, woo woo, weird tactics that are going on out there in the soundproofing community. And the longer I do this, I honestly realize like what I said that it's just not sexy to sell the idea of a double wall assembly or a concrete slab for your floor. It, it doesn't sell well. So it's way easier to have some cool wood product with wood binders and 100% recycled wood that like miraculously stops sound. That's like, and it's green. It's like, that's just way cooler and easier to sell. And it's like everyone latches onto it. So just, I hope this video helped you out with like cutting through all the crapola on the internet and uh yeah you know you could not trust me but i hope i made a good good point and effort here again if you want to soundproof correctly uh check out my free soundproofing workshop at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop that is soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop i will see you all next week with another helpful lesson on soundproofing mm -hmm.